YouTube! Welcome back to Creative Nonfiction Friday and part two of our Editor's Workshop series. This series is for all of you writers and editors out there, especially part one which addresses works both large and small across genres. If you missed that video, it's in the description below. In part two, however, we will be focusing on large projects such as novels, memoirs, and collections. Without further ado, I bring you today's topic, which is chapter order. So you've written or are in the process of writing this big huge project and you're thinking how the heck am I going to order this thing? There are boundless ways that you can order your story or collection and today I'm going to introduce you to six. The first order you can choose is probably the most used and arguably the easiest to use and that is chronological order. Order your segments based on when they took place from the earliest to the latest event. Or you could use reverse chronology and start from the latest event and work your way to the earliest event. However, as traditional and straightforward as chronology is, you can also play with it a bit. A few examples of unique chronological formats include John Green's Looking for Alaska, which uses the before and after format, Stephen Chbosky's The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which uses letter writing format, Walter Dean Meyer's Monster, which uses screenwriting, Jay Asher's 13 Reasons Why, which uses cassette tapes to play with format, and Lori Hall's Anderson's Winter Girls, which uses the strike through throughout the text. The second order that you can choose is start in the middle. Start in the middle or latter half of your story and then reveal what happened prior to that event. A few books that follow this format are Harumi Murakami's Norwegian Wood and Lori Hall's Anderson's Speak. I would definitely keep this format in mind if the event that you're leading up to or unraveling is a key moment in the protagonist's life. Something else that you can do, and I've only seen it done once, but but it was done brilliantly, is spoil the ending. In Marcus Zusak's The Book Thief, Death, who does not keep secrets, lets you know way ahead of time what is going to happen before the end of the story. The reason this format works so well is because you are so invested in the story and captivated by Marcus Zusak's writing style that you want to keep reading anyway. You want to experience every scene and every word. The fourth format you can choose is flip-flopping between past and present, or flip-flopping between character and character, or doing both. There are so many examples of this format. I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer, Mouse 1 and 2 by Art Spiegelman, American Born Chinese by Jean Lui Yang, and let's not forget the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series by Anne Brashers. If you have multiple protagonists in your story, this is of course a great option. Or if you want your story to seem more like a circular sequence of events rather than a linear sequence of events, this is also a great option for you. The fifth order I picked has nothing to do with time, but everything to do with association. Order your chapters according to how each scene or character relates to another. A few great examples of this include Safekeeping by Abigail Thomas, Dragon's Breath and Other True Stories by Marie Naomi, and Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. If you do choose this format, I would advise you to pick a title for each chapter so that the reader has a spot to land on each time he or she arrives at a new chapter. But then again, you are the author of your story, and if you want your reader to be a little bit confused and a little bit uncomfortable, then don't use titles. It is your story and you do know what's best for it. You can also play a bit with association format as well. An example of this would be Amy Krauss Rosenthal's An Encyclopedia of an Ordinary Life, which uses the association format by using the encyclopedia format. The sixth and final format I chose is interactive. Maybe you don't want a specific set order. Maybe you want each reader to pick and choose a different order every time he or she approaches your story. In print, you can do this by creating a choose your own adventure type story. You can also choose to turn your book into an entirely different shape. Although I haven't read it yet, I know that Knox by Ann Carson has an accordion-like shape to it. Online, there are so many things you can do with the interactive format. A few interactive hypertexts include My Body of Wunderkammer by Shelley Jackson and Mr. Plimpton's Revenge by Dinty W. Moore. The first essay is not dependent on order at all, and every time you visit it, you get to choose the order that you read it in. And even though the second one is a little bit more dependent on order and chronology, you still have the option of reading it out of order. I want to conclude by saying that picking an order for your story is a highly difficult decision, but it does not need to be dwelled on. With this decision, it's best to go with your gut. Think of your story as a venue and your order as the appropriate attire you would wear to that venue. Which format makes the most sense for your story? Never choose a weird out there format to be gimmicky, and never choose a weird out there format so that you can get the most readers. Format is really important, but content 
is everything. It is so much better to choose a subtle format for your amazing story than a weird out there format for your amazing story that does not fit that amazing story. Thank you guys so much for watching and participating in Editor's Workshop. I have a few more videos in this series in mind, so please stay tuned for those. In the comments below, please let me know if there's a format that I didn't cover in this video or leave any questions that you have about editing and I will be sure to answer them in an upcoming Q&A video. Bye!